Mama says namaste. Mama says namaste. Making a family can be easy and fun. Oh, yeah, but raising a family can be a whole different story. From spouses to kids to the crazy daily grind, life often directs us away from connection and more into reactive chaos. If you're tired of that cycle and are seeking something beyond the picket fence blues, this is the show for you. I'm Ashley. And I'm Nathan. And we're here to take you from chaos to clarity by bringing awareness and intention into your home, not waiting for one day, and highlighting how the, the uniqueness, uniqueness in each of us strengthens, strengthens all, all of us. Take a deep breath in and let's start a brand new day. With Mama Says Namaste. Welcome to another Mama Says Namaste episode, and this is another guest episode. So I am so thrilled to have Lenora Edwards joining me today. She is a speech therapist, and as we get into our conversation, I want to share with you, as always, that when I do these these guest interviews, they are available to listen to through the podcast. You can hop over to YouTube, and you can watch the video and see us there, or you can hop over to mamasaysnamaste.com and hit the blog post there that goes along with this episode. Episode, and you can read a corresponding blog and watch the video and listen to it all on that same spot. So there you go. Many ways to listen. And now I want to get into the conversation today. So Lenora is a speech an expert speech therapist. And I'm going to leave it at that because uh, she started telling me more about what all she's doing. And I, I knew I needed to just hit pause and go ahead and get the interview started because I want to share it all with you all. So Lenore, thank you for being here. Um, let us know a little bit about yeah where you are now and, and what got you to this place as well. Thank you so much for having me, Ashley. I absolutely love the title, Mama Says Namaste. I think it's brilliant. So my name is Lenora Edwards. I am a board certified speech language pathologist with a company called Better Speech. And we are actually an online speech therapy company. And we've been online since long before the pandemic. So we're very comfortable being online. And we are actually over 150 speech pathologists strong. And we are able to provide online speech therapy services throughout the U.S. and all states. And we are also internationally based. So it's really, really phenomenal. We provide effective, affordable, and high quality speech therapy services right from the comfort of your own home. Oh, that is wonderful. Okay. And so, um, and I, I love that also because it's it's been very fun to see that people have listened in on the podcast from all across the world. And so we do have people that listen in Australia and in Germany and uh, geez, I'm trying to think of where some of the other ones are that I've seen recently, but yeah, so we've got people listening in from all over the world. We all still have that same desire for how can we create that, that home that we, that we love coming home to and make our, making a home into, or a, a house into a home. Um, and yeah, looking at ways that we can um, not just connect with our children, but also help our children thrive. So how did you get into speech therapy? I started in speech therapy. I Oh, golly, I graduated well over 10 years ago. And I initially started in nursing and nursing is actually very strong in my family. And it, I absolutely loved it. It just was not the quite fit for me. So I was in university and I walked myself over a few other buildings and I actually was taking a few courses and it just lit up like fireworks for me. I absolutely loved it. And I, I had speech therapy when I was younger and, and I worked with a lot of children when I would babysit that needed speech therapy services also. So it was always a, a really common theme throughout my entire life. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so when it comes to speech therapy, I mean, first off, let's just start, start to kind of identify what type of people would benefit from your services. So, um, what are the common things that you're seeing that you, that you are dealing with, um, in, in the services? That's a great question. So I usually like to tell people we work from the neck and up. So we see a, a huge array of people with a variety of different things. So for example, I've worked in the NICU for feeding therapy for little ones that were just born to make sure that they could safely eat. Mm -hmm. I've also worked with um, feeding on a feeding therapy team to make sure little ones were able to actually chew their food effectively. So then when we get into the speech component, we're talking about the articulation, voice, fluency. And then we also work with individuals for language. Now, language is actually two parts. Everything that we hear and understand is the receptive part of language. And everything that I'm quite literally saying as I'm talking is the expressive part of language. 
And then we also work with adults, whether it be with, sometimes we work with adults for dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, neurological difficulties, even COVID brain fog. So we really work from the neck and up and we work with a variety of all ages. Wow. That's, I mean, that's fascinating. And I love that you said that because I mean, I never would have thought speech therapy for food and eating Mm -hmm. or, you know, or necessarily for brain fog or anything like that. I wouldn't have actually necessarily considered that, but it's all the same sorts of, of, of things to Mm -hmm. get you there. And then you're working with helping them develop how to speak effectively. Mm -hmm everything else. Yeah, absolutely. So we actually, for, for a variety of reasons, the fact that we're online is really, really functional because, and people will say, really speech therapy online. I'm like, absolutely. We're right there in the comfort of your own home. And we will actually work with little ones on the computer. But the nice thing is, is that if we took them to a clinic or if we went to a school, we were at, we're actually kind of disrupting their system and they're disrupting their day a little bit. And we're taking them out of their element. So it, they might not transition as we really, really hope that they'll transition. And they might not have a great session because we've now really disrupted this pattern and their day. So when we have the opportunity to be in your own home, we are in the environment that they are most comfortable in. And they're with their most familiar people, their most familiar toys. Things uh-huh. go a lot, lot easier. And I absolutely love the fact that parent and guardian are right there with the little one that we're working with right now, if I took somebody to the clinic, we actually have to separate them because of this whole isolation thing that still goes on in, in some areas of the U S and especially with shields and masks still being present. So that's still going on. So it's really a little bit harder to get a really strong therapy session. But when we're on the computer, when we're right in the comfort of your own home, what is also fantastic is that we are able to be there and coach the parent of the guardian that is there with the child and we'll tell be able to explain what we're doing and why we're doing it and it's so much more impactful because we really then get to help them use it functionally in their day we might get 30 to 60 minutes with the child depending on the week or depending on the severity but it's really important that we also support these parents and guardians in their process of making it functional so that way They're the ones that are there all the time. So they really want the best for their children. And that is the best way to be able to do it, to explain to them what we're doing and then how to do it without us there. Oh, I love that. And I feel that you you hit so many parts that I think can be stumbling blocks for families. Um, Oftentimes, uh, I know, I mean, I know in my own personal story of my daughters struggling through stuttering and my middle one being a severe stutterer. Um, and, you know, the the time of our lives that we were in, I'm running around with small children. We had a very busy life and adding adding in speech therapy and going to speech therapy and doing that was not necessarily going to be conducive to yeah lessening the stress in our life at all. And so, yeah, we looked at pulling back on the stressors and everything else. And I, and I see such value in what you're talking about on not taking them out of their element, but allowing them to learn in their element and having the parents over here, um, because that is is definitely something where uh, what is done in therapy can be great. But if it's only done in therapy, it's not going to go so far. Mm-hmm. We like to get that growth, that expansion across the areas. You're completely right. It will only go so far. And we also have the ability with our platform, we have a ton of games. So we're really able to share the screen and have them take remote control over our screen and do different things and really provide that complete care because the little one then is there. They see that they're, they're obviously being very cared for. They're also being supported by the parent of the guardian that's there with them. They know that this is important. So we have really a huge connection going on. And then we're able to make it really fun because of the platform that we use. And then once we're done, we'll, we'll be able to say, okay, we'll just sign on to your dashboard when you're done. And whenever you want, come on and play games. And that way speech is fun and functional. A lot of the time people will think like, Oh, I have to sit down and study. I grew up when I when I was younger, when I had to study, it was you're going to sit down at a table and it was very, very structured. Whereas now we find that the more fun we can make it, the more impactful it is. And the brain will make faster changes because it's having fun and it's not seeing it. It's having a completely different chemical response when it's experienced as a something fun. And that way, that growth and that expansion and that building is so much stronger and so much faster. 
Oh my goodness. And you just, you make it so much easier by opening that door immediately in the house. It's not having to be brought home or, uh, you know, re reiterated what you went over, but they're actually seeing and experiencing it. Um, you know, it, it, you're so, you're so right with the, I mean, with just the, the nature of the way things are right now, where anytime we're going out and we're taking our children out in public, it's oftentimes we're taking them and handing them off and we're out of the loop of what is going on. And that is so valuable for us to know. Yeah. So um, in the desire to be there and be attentive with our kids, what are some things, what are some signs that may show? I mean, clearly, if I if I'm seeing, you know, like my daughter struggling a lot, I, I saw very evident signs. Is there anything that, yeah, are those those um, some some quick signs that you can say, OK, this is this is where this would really be helpful for you now? That's a great question and definitely one that people ask a lot. Usually, so little ones, their language starts developing. And I say this often is that when. I find out people are pregnant. I'm like, great, start talking because yeah. <laughs> yes. they are able to understand even in the womb, they're picking up information and it's so, so important. And once they're finally here, that blessed day, their brain and their body continue to develop at massively rapid paces. And it's really important that we continue to talk with them. And some people will call it narrating. Some people will call it just talking or sports casting. But as you're talking with your little one, you're explaining their entire environment because they have no idea what anything is. And it's up to us to explain it. So we're actually born with the ability to understand language, but there needs to be language input for that part of our brain to really develop and to make sense. So when your little ones are born, keep talking. <laughs> Absolutely. And you'll start to see as they hit one year old, they'll start to get one word. As they go to two years old, they'll start to develop two words. So when they go to three, they'll start to get three combinations. And that's kind of like a very general rule of thumb. Children do develop their language at a different pace. We do have guidelines, absolutely. And they, they are very, very important. Receptive language, when our ability to actually understand and hear language, if you're concerned about that, some things that you'll see is can your little one follow commands? Will they respond to their name at two years old? If we say, okay, let's find your shoes and they can't identify their shoes or they can't go find their shoes. That's definitely a concern because they quite literally don't know what you're asking them and they don't know what they're looking for. And that is definitely a cause for concern. Or if you ask them yes or no questions, do you want more? You want to see that response for them to actually indicate to you what they want. So that would be a concern for a receptive language difficulty. And they do go up from there. So if you're saying things like, um, once they start to ask questions, so show me, show me the fish in our book. Can they identify the fish in your book and really start to understand that they've now heard all this information, but they're able to show you that they understand this information. When it comes to expressive language, our little ones start talking and communicating very, very early. Talking, most people will say, oh, they don't have words. And we'll say, okay, but are they communicating? Are they engaging with you? What's their eye contact? Are they coming to you if they want something? Are they pulling you and pointing that they want something? That is a form of communication. Are they babbling? Ooh, ooh ah, ah, are they stringing sounds together? Those are all really good signs of strong communication skills. If your little one doesn't have a lot of vocabulary, we would say, okay, well, what age are you? So the great thing is, is I don't know if this has ever happened to you, Ashley. I roll over at 2 a.m. and I have a question about, <laughs> uh, about whatever it may be. And I would like to speak with a professional as soon as possible. 2 a.m., fine. I'll wait till appropriate business hours. But in right now, if you had a concern and you wanted your child evaluated, a lot of the clinics are waiting six months just to get your child evaluated. It's a really, really long waiting period. Whereas with better speech, if you have concerns, reach out to us immediately. We can offer you a free 15 minute consultation where you will speak with a speech language pathologist. You can talk to a human, not a computer. This is a great Wonderful. thing. Yes. And we can get you matched as early as the next day to really see if your child may have a delay. And what's the worst that's going to happen? Even if I've, and I've heard this many times, I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing something. That's mm -hmm. a great thing. And that should be celebrated. Yes. Absolutely. Because in the event that you didn't listen to that instinct, 
you might now push that instinct off for four months and that language part of the brain and body continue to develop and they didn't wait four months in that development. So now we're four months behind. So if you have concerns, absolutely visit us at betterspeech.com and we can absolutely start you with a speech language pathologist as early as the next day. So that way we can address your concerns because that, that window of language development really is so, so big. So it's hard to really say, this two-year-old, unless I knew, have, unless I have more details, but yeah, it's really awesome. Oh, I mean, I, I, there are times where I really advocate for put down the screen and go be person to person with somebody. There are times where I go, oh my gosh, it opens things up so much. And I know here as a coach myself, um, that's one of the beauty. I mean, I do coaching referrals. So not just for me for coaching, but also just um, working and running my father's company. I'm doing a lot of coaching or business coaching referrals as well. And um, and anytime somebody says, you know, can I can you show me who the closest coach, coach is in, in Boise, Idaho? I, I, I help to educate them. Do you really want who's just next door or do you want who's the best fit for what it is you're looking for? And, really? when, you've got, and when you've got speech therapy um, offices, oftentimes you are very limited. I mean, there's not there's not a lot of people that are going to be speech therapists on call at the same time anyway. And so this is such a beauty to not only get access to a larger range, but also have that opportunity to get somebody who really gets what you need and what your family needs, as opposed to just what's the closest, most convenient one. I love that you pointed that out to about technology and truly pointing out what is, what is the best fit for your family. So with technology, it's so important that, and I hear parents say, oh, I'm being bad. And they'll put their, their, Mm. phone away. And I really try to encourage people to in, use technology to your advantage. Yes. It's not going anywhere. So if it's out, make it something functional. Or if your kid has a question, that's a great question. Let's look it up together. Right. And when you look it up together, you're having that bonding experience, but you're also showing and, and children love to model. They love, they will show you everything that you're doing show them that it can be used for good and teach them that it can be used for good because they will then use it for good and really start to educate themselves. And that is such a fantastic thing. So when we're on doing Zoom sessions, they're understanding that this is education. This is learning. This is learning and play at the same time, which can coexist. It's not one or the other. They can absolutely coexist. And as a board certified speech pathologist, what that means is I have I have the appropriate education and I've also passed a very specific test and I've graduated and I've met all these credentials. Now, as a board certified therapist, I can then go and apply for licensure in a state. I live in the state of Pennsylvania, but I am licensed in five states, which allows me to provide speech therapy services to people in Colorado, to people in South Carolina. And sometimes we can we can get a number of states if we would like. I, I think somebody that I know, that I know personally has over twelve licenses, oh, okay. even though they live in one state. What that allows them to do is they can work with people in different time zones, and it's not just the person that was there. It's the best fit for yes. that family, and that is so important. When you have a good connection with a coach, with a therapist, with a doctor, with any trusted professional or any trusted person, when you have good rapport, it's yeah. because there's really good rapport. And that's something to be treasured and very, very, spe- and to be held very specially in your heart, because you're having that person there with you. And they're helping you through this. And it's really something that cannot just be dismissed as like, oh, we just didn't get along great. Okay, no problem. If you didn't get along great, find a great fit for you. That's yeah. so important. And I think oftentimes, uh, we, we, we do. I know I personally have, have navigated this too. We struggle with limitations because of the hassle of finding that right fit, whether that's hiring somebody to work with us, getting that great babysitter, everything mm-hmm. else. Well, what are we going to do? Just all, do all the work ourselves, never get a babysitter. No, mm-hmm. we just keep going and we find that person that is oh, a good I- fit. And it is a lot easier to do that if I've got a curated list of the good fit people here <laughs> into better speech and then be able to go in and find that one that really does resonate. Completely. Okay, so I do have another question for you here. Um, you've got the great fit. You have the very clear um, uh, need for, for it. 
And yet there is a struggle for engagement, a struggle for going forward or follow through. Um, how, do, how does this, how does it keep you accountable? How do you, how do you kind of navigate that? I know sometimes, and, and unfortunately, you know, sometimes there are kids that really have the need and the parents don't have the bandwidth, the awareness or whatever to fully um, recognize or work with that child. Mm-hmm. That's a great question. What we can do is we really do work with them one-on-one and that one with them being, whether it's a child or that family, what do you need? What is a good fit for you? If you say, you know what, Friday morning at 10 a.m. is when we have the availability. Great. Let's find somebody that's a really good fit for you for Friday morning at 10 a.m. when you have the availability. Because when it comes to speech development, when it comes to working with your child, it is really important. And I, I honestly, sincerely believe most people don't want to put this on the back burner and be like, I just ugh, I couldn't today. And it is important to them. So let's support them in that area where it's important. How else can we engage them? How else can we make it fit? If games aren't a thing, okay, great. You guys have flashcards. Show me your toys and really figure out what works for that child because that's so important. It's about that child's development. I can have games that are that are fantastic. And if they're like, I don't like games, I like flashcards. Great. They want flashcards and we know what works for them. So it's really about finding what works for them, not forcing what I, what I think they need, but figuring out, being the detective, what is working for them, what's not working for them. I have a little one on my caseload and right now I think they love clips of the movie Elf. So in between working on S sounds, we're looking at, snowball and silly and finding all these s sounds that are within that scene and no we're not watching movies it's like 10 20 seconds that we're watching and then we're able to okay let's go back what did we see what did we find oh i love it really having that back and forth of what is functional and how can we make it effective for them that's the most important and that that so affirms what I talk about here on Mama Says Namaste um, when we talk about unschooling, beyond unschooling, whether whatever labels you choose, if you do public, private or whatever, I believe we all can be advocates for functional education, which is just like fun- functional medicine, incorporating the mind, body, soul. It's, it's your whole life of education. Oh, you have the opportunity to learn. And um and you're speaking very much in alignment to where I talk about what's easy for learning when it comes to unschooling, functional education, or whatever you want to call it, is that delight led learning. I mean, we know, I know as an adult that if I'm enjoying it, I'm going to retain it a lot more than if I am just required to memorize for a test. And so, um, so yeah, not having a cookie cutter approach, there's not just one way for therapy um, or for, for the support for your family, but really saying, I'm, I'm willing to hear what what's that best fit for you and follow through with that so that it's um, kind of speaking the languages of the family as well. Completely. I love that. You said that so beautifully. Oh, I love that. <laughs> All right. Well, so um, as we start to kind of wrap things up here, um, yes, what is uh, what what are some words of support you could give for families right now? I know that I know honestly, you know, I'm even thinking about this. This just popped into my head. But um, as we are as as we're recording this, we're going right into the holidays and we're going to be we're going to be airing this um, probably a few weeks right after. But as we um, as we're thinking of, you know, going and interacting with others, sometimes when you have that child who has uh, speech delays or we're struggling with our own speech or anything like that. What are some insights or any, any way that we could maybe help to navigate or educate somebody uh, on, on what might be a challenge for us or for our child? That's a great question. So ways to, to really help engage, to help reduce the, the challenges or the difficulties someone may be having. I really like to get, especially with little ones, I like to be eye to eye with them. When, mm-hmm. you're, when you're looking down, it's very authoritative, very intimidating to them. And they are also trying to communicate to you in what may feel to them as a more stressed situation. Some kids are just developed differently and they experience stress differently in their body than other children. So to really be aware of that, to just allow them time to talk and really engage. And when they're playing, talk about the things that they're playing with and see what else that get to know them and to really listen and and be present in that moment with those little ones. Especially if, um, as as I'm sure you're well experienced with somebody who is disfluent, 
to really just allow them the space to talk and to reduce the stress as much as possible because that little one really does want to talk something else is going on and they're they're having periods where they can't be as fluent so to be as supportive as we can in those moments is really important Yes, I know that for us, our mantra for a good year and a half, two years was slow your roll. And I had, I literally had a picture of a cinnamon roll and the word slow your roll. And I pulled it out multiple times over the years because we're a fast paced family. And I, I, it was brought very much to my attention by my stuttering children that in our, in our household of constant dialogue and constant narration, we, we did, we did so much awesome speech therapy. It was too fast for our kids. Our kids could not, um, could not get it out of their mouth as fast as all of the words floating around in their head. And so, yeah, when I started looking at it, I mean, uh, we, in, in our, in our experience, what we did is we literally slowed down. We slowed our pace in every way. We slowed our um, our interactions even and just allowing for more white space in our interactions as a family. And it was amazing how much that, yeah, that does make a difference. Huge difference. Um, I yeah. love that. Slow your roll with a cinnamon roll. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Slow your roll. Sometimes yeah. I think we want to speed up or kind of like um, muscle over if we mm-hmm. don't get out correctly. And, and in doing that, it doesn't, it's not reinforcing, it, it's not making it any better in that, but just allowing more space can be so valuable. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Oh, well, thank you so much for being on with me today. Um, I hope that, yes, anybody who is needing any support, please check out Better Speech. Um, is it betterspeech.com? betterspeech.com. Thank you so much, Ashley, for having me. It was great talking with you. I really enjoyed it. Well, thank you so much. Um, Hop over to Mama Says Namaste for your one-stop catch-all for all the different ways that you can see this, hear this, and read this, as well as getting the links to Better Speech and um, and everything else in in the blog post as well. So thank you so much. We celebrate everybody in their walks in life and in their journeys. And we want to look at how we can give space and grace for people to grow and to really recognize and appreciate how the uniqueness in each of us strengthens all of us. Namaste. One, two, three. Up with the rising sun, already on the run. Mama says, Mama stay. Life is a tangle.